Okay, so thank you all for coming uh, to tonight's online screening event, and it's great to see you all. Uh, I'm Liang Yufu, I'm the librarian for Chinese studies, and today's film screening is part of China Ongoing Perspectives, or CHOP. Uh, CHOP is uh, co-sponsored by the Libre Sorogo Center for Chinese Studies and uh, the Asia Library, and it's co-organized by my colleague, Carol Stepanchak and myself. Uh, CHOP se se series provides selected documentary films that view the Chinese speaking world through those lenses of reality on transitional and the transcultural events and uh, memories. Uh, if you have any questions about CHOP, or if you have any films uh, you would like to recommend to us, please feel free uh, to reach out to Carol and me. Um, and in just two days, we are going to welcome the uh, Lunar New Year of Ox. Uh, I believe this coming year means a lot to all of us in terms of recovery, change, and hope. So we wish everyone a uh, Happy New Year first. Um, so uh, tonight's CHOP event is on the theme of a spring festival and one of the most uh, remarkable fe features of it, Chunyun or spring festival travel season, the so-called largest annual human migration in the world. Uh, the movie we are going to be screening is Last Train Home uh, or Gui Tu Lie Che in Chinese, uh, directed by Fan Li Xin and first released in 2009. Um, it is about the experience of a couple of uh, migrant workers tra traveling back home for the Chinese New Year along with 130 million of their peer migrant workers. Uh, we would like to especially thank uh, the Ask With Media Library and my colleague Jeff Pearson for making the online streaming possible. Um, at every CHOP event, we not only screen a film, but also invite scholars or directors or both of them <laughs> to discuss the film. So um, tonight we are thrilled to have a Professor Mary Gallagher as one of our discussant. Um, professor Gallagher is a professor of uh, political science and uh, Amy and Alan Lowenstein, professor in democracy, democratization, and human rights at the University of uh, Michigan. Uh, at U of M, she serves as the director of the International uh, Institute and uh, the former director of the Liber Farrogo Center for Chinese Studies. Uh, she is a world-renowned expert on quite a few fields in political science, uh, such as uh, Chinese politics, comparative politics of uh, transitional and uh, developing states, and law and uh, society. Moreover, related to the theme of uh, tonight's film, one field of her expertise is the politics of uh, uh, labor in China. Uh, we will have live di discussion with her after the movie ends, where she will be sharing her reflections on the film and her academic expertise and insights. Um, now I will turn to Carol, and she will announce our special guest and share a few housekeeping items for tonight's screening. Carol, please. Thanks, Young. Happy New Year, everyone. And as part of the celebration, uh, Director Li Xin Fan may be joining us for the Q&A with Professor Gallagher. Uh, and we have Chinese Studies Center Associate Fang Zhang to thank for these arrangements. Uh, Director Fong, however, is in the midst of traveling in China uh, for his next documentary, but uh, hopes to be with us after the film, schedule and uh, internet providing. But in either case, stay tuned after the film for, for Professor Gallagher's remarks and a time to share your thoughts. And just a couple of housekeeping items. Um, we're going to be showing uh, the video through Zoom, but if you have low bandwidth or an unstable internet connection, you might pre prefer to use the links that I'm going to share right now with all of you. And uh, just remember um, to rejoin us in an hour and 25 minutes after the film starts. Um, 
uh, your feedback and impressions would be most welcome. And also, and I too want to give a shout out to Askwith Media Library for making uh, this, this film and others available uh, free of charge. It's a great resource. So thank you. And I think we can start the film. Great, okay. So without further ado, um, I will share my screen and uh, start the film soon. I hope you all enjoy it. And uh, 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 we will, um, I think the Q&A will start right after the movie ends. Okay, so I think uh, in the interest of time, uh, I, I, I stopped the film at about one hour and 27 minutes. Uh, I think for those who would uh, want to, in, to enjoy to the very end, uh, and uh, uh, especially the ending credit, uh, you could review um, this film, uh, rewatch this film uh, through the links we uh, uh, Carol pro provided early on. So, uh, wow, uh, it's such a, powerful film and uh, I want uh, I wanted to say that actually the Center for Chinese Studies sponsored this film to be shown in Ann Arbor Film uh, Festival in 2010. Uh, so the, uh, after about 11 years uh, we revived this wonderful film through our online chop event. Uh, we really wish that we could see uh, each other. Um, so I think um, uh, now we are going to uh, start our uh, discussion and uh, Q and A. Um, see who is here. We are so thrilled to have the director of this film, uh, uh, director Fan Li Xing, to join us. We are so thrilled to uh, have you here on today. Especially, we all know that you just got got off a plane and got settled in a hotel room. So we really appreciate that you take the time. Uh, so now I think um, I would uh, uh, then give the time to Professor Mary Gallagher and the, the uh, director uh, Fan Li Xin. So I think uh, you could start to share your thoughts and from the perspective. Uh, of a scholar and a filmmaker. So uh, share with us uh, what's on your mind and uh, how do you interpret um, the people and uh, their experience depicted in this wonderful film. Okay, so uh, uh, how about let's get uh, started. So Professor Gallagher, would you want to get us uh, started with the Q Q&A? And then in the meantime, for the audience, please feel free to type your questions comments and thoughts through the Q&A. So Carol and, uh, and I will collect them and then we, uh, we will uh, then uh, bring forward these uh, questions to Professor Gallagher and the director Fan. Okay, so. <laughs> Thank you, Liang Yu. Can, can you hear me okay? Yes. Mm. Okay, thanks. <laughs> So um, thank you so much for uh, the film and thank you, Director Fan, for producing such an amazing and directing such an amazing film for us. Uh, I saw it many years ago. I hadn't watched it in several years. And um, I mean, as people perhaps put questions into the q and A, I I'd just like to start off with um, one question about um, the, the daughter, obviously, Jiang Qin, who's got a very um, powerful story. And, um, you know, I think nowadays, and we might call her, um, she's post 80s, she's Baling Ho, she's, she's the second or third generation, I guess, in her case, second generation of, of migrant workers. Um, and in um, contemporary China today, there's a discussion about the working conditions of not only migrant workers, but also tech workers, including the anti-996 movement and um, the discussion about the um, working conditions in big tech factory, in big tech companies. So um, when you hear about those things happening today, uh, it almost seems like you were predicting what would happen 10 years later with uh, a new generation of young Chinese workers uh, who seem to reject the their parental uh, their parents' emphasis on hard work. So, do, do you think do you see the nine nine six the anti nine nine six movement as somehow related to Jiang Qin's rebellion against her parents? 
Um, okay, uh, can you hear me all right? Yes. Okay, uh, great. Um, that is a good question. Um, I mean, the, the, although they're all bowling whole, uh, but the film was made almost 10 years ago. And the, I think Zhang Qing represents another uh, working class. I mean, the second generation of migrant workers. And for the, uh, you're, you're quite right by um, pointing out the anti-996 and the, uh, in the tech industry uh, these days, there's a lot of discussion on the Chinese social media of uh, the, the bowling whole generation. They, uh, they're, they're in a way exploited by the by, by the uh, our harsh competition and the uh, the fast um, moving forward of the tech industry uh, and to still I mean in a, in a nutshell I think it's also to uh, all this young generation trying to make uh, to realize their dream to have a better life in the city and to migrate away from uh, either uh, their village life or from uh, away from their uh, small town life um, but to have a modern life uh, modern life uh, in the bigger in the big cities the metrop metropolitans so uh, in that regard I think uh, either Zhang Xing or uh, the young generation the young people who works in the big uh, tech companies in China today Tencent or Alibaba uh, they're they're more or less the uh, I think th there's there, there's a great deal of uh, similarity between between them. Um, however, uh, I think in the past ten years, uh, the, uh, the the economic did grow a lot uh, in China, and uh, there are uh, considerable social development, especially last year. Um, uh, uh, the state uh, claiming that uh, you know we're we're left out. Of the, Poverty as a as a nation, uh, so there are there are economic uh, progress, and you see visible uh, improvement of people's life. Um, in fact, I want to show you a picture of Jiang Qing today. Uh, I don't know if if I can just put this to the camera. That's Jiang Qing today. Can you believe that she? Uh, grow up and she found love in a beautiful, beautiful city in, called Xiamen in Southern China, not away from, uh, not far away from Guangdong. And she's the mother of a young, lovely daughter. I actually met her last month because um, uh, a friend of mine, also a director, uh, he is keen on, you know, following up a little bit of uh, uh, how Zhang Xing and his and her little brother and a parent's life. So we're sort of doing a sequel. Um, not me, but uh, a friend of mine. Uh, we're doing a sequel to this family and see how their life is today after 10 years. Uh, I think you, you muted your mic. Thank you. Um, I didn't think watching the movie now in 2021, it seems like the movie was you know, so long ago, that time period doesn't seem like it was only, you know, 12 or uh, a few more years, um, because the change has been so dramatic. And um, people like Jiang Qin, you could tell, you know, even in the movie that she was definitely always thinking, always um, contemplating her future. And I'm so glad to see that she's now in um, Shaman and, 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 and happy and, and well. There are some questions um, that I'm going to try to get to in the Q&A because there were almost 90 people watching the film. So uh, the first question is uh, very important, which is asking, what city are you in right now? Right. Uh, I can make a little bit of an introduction for today's uh, Q&A Zoom session. Um, I have just landed in Lhasa, the city of Lhasa, which is the capital city of uh, Tibet. And um, I'm actually on a shoot for my, uh, for the current, uh, for the film that I'm currently making. So behind me, you can see, it's really, I think it's really a, a special time for us to have this conversation today, because today is the Chinese uh, New Year's Eve, Day. And it also happens to be the Tibetan calendar New Year. Mm. It it's the New Year for both calendar, and it uh, I don't think it happens all the time. 
It happens like uh, maybe a hundred years or something. So today is very special. And behind me, I'm, I'm actually in the hospital where my uh, subject of the film is working. Uh, so behind me, they have this really nice window and behind me is the Putala Palace. Uh, it was built in the uh, 13th century. So uh, it's really uh, a symbol of, uh, of Lhasa city. And last night, it was a big snow. So in the remote mountains, you can see mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. snow on the mountains. I thought, um, well, we might as well just put a nicer background for this, uh, for this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. So I have one question that's quite interesting. So I'm just going to read the question um, from Jasmine. As a director who has traveled the world, would you say that the despair and nihilism experienced by youth and by parents in poverty or unstable conditions is a universal experience, not confined to just one circumstance or locale, also prevalent in wealthy Western countries? Question mark. Uh, I, I dare not to venture to say that I travel the world and see many of the, um, the situation of uh, the world use is experiencing now, but uh, from some films, from some other brilliant films that I did come across, uh, like uh, Minding the Gap, a um, few years ago, won the Academy Award, uh, and some other films that um, we can see uh, in China uh, about how, how the youth are facing challenges today, uh, either from, uh, uh, you know, the clash of the traditional culture or the traditional, the parallel uh, 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 a happy life should be and how the world is reshaping so fast, especially in places like China, um, you, you, can, you can get disoriented uh, quite easily, especially when you're younger. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I would say um, the young, young generation is uh, facing a lot of challenges, both from technology, technological development, the social shifting, uh, and many other factors. Um, and also, I, I think I saw films about, uh, you know, the um, uh, I think youth in Africa, how their lack of uh, resources of bettering their knowledge and their, their knowledge of life. And also um, using the refugee situation and trying to, you know, reestablish themselves or, or their lives in, in Europe. Um, all these um, matters are, they, they looks like a regional problem, but in fact, it's, if, you, if you look through them, it, it can be a global issue of how we can, or the society or the government or um, organization can, can put more thinking on it or even put more resources on it to, to help them uh, in their various uh, challenging situations. I have to say, um, I uh, watched the film tonight with my son, who was about, he's about the same age as Jiang Xin was at, at the time of the filming. And although he's quite you know, privileged in terms of class and environment, um, he definitely identified with Jiang Xin. And during the fight with the father, he said, you can never hit me like that if, if, <laughs> if I swear at you or whatever. So I think youth around the world, no matter their conditions, will identify with rebellion. Um, so I have a question which is in the chat from Rashmi, which is similar uh, or related to this question of um, the conflict between the parents and the children. Um, she says, great film. Could the director please comment on how the documentary was filmed? For example, capturing the subjects in bed while fighting. Um, how did he build trust with his subjects? Right. This is a question I used to get all the time. Uh, when we were touring the film. Uh, in fact, uh, as you may all know that uh, making uh, a observational uh, a sort of direct cinema um, kind of film, uh, you do need to invest a lot of time and uh, you do need to acquire uh, a great amount of uh, trust between your, your subjects uh, and, and the crew. Uh, so some simple facts, we filmed for three years and uh, I spent 
like two over two thirds of of all the time uh, out of a year with the family, either with the parents or with children in when they are when they're in either in factory or in the village. So a lot of time goes into that, and also you need to have a sort of a complete uh, honesty and transparency with them. Uh, you answer their questions if they have doubts or if they have uh, reservations. Uh, I don't tend to uh, press on them to get any any footage that I I hope for. Uh, but over the time, you build that trust, and you you. I think I think. When you, when you do your job right, uh, they they will understand you're doing this, uh, not trying to exploit them in any sense, even like getting the intimate shots of of of, of a bedroom uh, where usually people were not supposed to be in there. Uh, so, but gradually they they understand and they I, I guess they are willing to help. But for specific, specifically for say shots like in the bedroom when they're talking and they're worried, it was um, it was actually becomes a a sort of a routine for us. I would do that all the time, and mm -hmm. they, they 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 don't mind. They they never minded, uh, and that was almost two years time we spent together. We're like a family. I mean, they would come to my dorm and we would talk. I would be lying in bed and they would chat with me. So it's it's really a building a, a, a profound level of trust so that we could get uh, those kind of shots. Uh, there are some other questions that are related to the filming process. Um, one question is related to the selection of the family and how the family was selected. And then another uh, question is uh, a question about another of the characters in the film, the older, uh, I'm sorry, the younger brother, Yang. Um, how is he doing? Did he finish school or work at a factory? And how are the parents doing? Mm -hmm. So regarding uh, selection of the uh, character, uh, I, I did quite a bit of the research before I even started the filming. Uh, I was a video journalist at CCTV, uh, China, the Chinese national broadcaster, before I started making this film. Um, so I was, uh, I was quite intrigued by, always quite intrigued by the um, the Chun Yun, uh, mm -hmm. the spring festival migration, where hundreds of millions of migrant workers travel back and forth between uh, their home village and uh, the factory cities where they're working. So I, I studied uh, I studied quite a bit on this topic, and uh, I come up with a, a sort of a filtering system or filter, filtering methodology. I wanted to look for very specifically a character who has uh, who is maybe a couple, and they needed to be migrating for a long time, at least fifteen plus years, uh, which which I would make sure that they pretty much experienced the whole. You know, after the Chinese opening up uh, period. Uh, and also I wanted to look for a family uh, who was originally from you know, small villages, in, maybe in the mountains or somewhere really difficult to travel to or travel out of. They need to take different uh, transportation methods, trains, bus, buses, or even like a ferry boat. Uh, so that that is something I'm also looking for. And also I wanted to, very importantly, I wanted to portray two generations uh, to see really how how the second generation would, uh, would turn out to be, whether they would, uh, through the first generation's hard work, uh, they would accumulate enough resources to facilitate the second generation to finish their schooling and uh, sort of climb up the social ladder, or it would uh, it, it would um, somehow turn out to be another way. So that's something I always had in my mind when I set out to look for uh, my characters. Uh, and also if this family happens to be an older generation, that would be even better uh, because they would speak for um, how 
Chinese peasants class were, uh, what, what their livelihood was like uh, after the liberation, after 1949. So you kind of have a, mm -hmm. uh, a slice of three generations of Chinese peasants and uh, how, their, how their fate or destiny would look like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, sorry, what was the second, gen second question? The, the, the second question was a more uh, personal question about the son, about Yang oh, yeah. and, 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 and what happened to him. There was a lot of pressure on him, as I remember. Right. So Yang has uh, a very interesting hit. Uh, when you mentioned the Jiu Jiu Liu, uh, 996, uh, Yang has become one of the, <laughs> one okay. of the, that. He entered, uh, he, he, so he attended the university, he studied the computer science, mm -hmm. and he, uh, after graduation, he found a job in a tech company, in a software company in Chengdu. Mm -hmm. That's uh, also a big city in Southwest China, province, uh, the capital city of Sichuan province. Uh, so he's uh, he's working as a software engineer. Um, he has a he has a girlfriend now. And last time I met him, it was two months ago because we were trying to like restart the shooting. So I went out. I reached out to to get to know how their lives look like. Uh, he yeah he's under a lot of pressure, a lot of overtime working. Uh, they. Uh, their company is working for, I think their company is like a supplier for Huawei. <laughs> yeah. A lot of pressure. Um, yeah, a lot of pressure. Um, and he makes okay money, uh, but like any other young people who works in the big cities now, especially boys, they're under great pressure. They need to save money and buy a house um, since he's have a girlfriend now. I need to think for the future if he's gonna get married soon, or you know, all the all the pressure for an adult is coming at him. Uh, so I'm being told by uh, Liang Yu and Carol to only ask one more question. So one question that um, I'm also interested in is relating um, the that time period's working conditions to the contemporary period. This is a question from from Mike. Um, but I also want to relate it to Yang because I think it's so interesting that, in a sense, he exemplifies um, what's happening more recently with Chinese um, rural people that they, even if they get educated, they no longer necessarily go to the coast. They may stay closer to their hometown, like he's in Chengdu, he's not going to Shanghai or, or Guangzhou. Um, but this intense competition among white collar workers in the nine, nine in also involving in the anti 996 movement in some ways their conditions are so much better than what Zhang Qin or her parents experienced but they are very unhappy and and very pressured to you know buy like you said buy a house and get married and um, some of my students talk about this idea of um, Nadra, and I don't know how to, I think in Chi in English, some kind of like involution, like just this kind of very intense competition that it's hard to succeed. Um, do you, do you have a sense of why there's so much unhappiness among people who have really, they've really succeeded in, in many ways? That's a, that's a, that's a very complicated topic, uh, but uh, if, if we if we boil it down, I think it's uh, yeah there there are great uh, progress, and um, I think young it, since there's great competition, there's a lot of pre peer pressure, mm -hmm. and I think social media also played a big part in fueling the anxiety of of all of us, especially the young generation, because they're so like, we're all so addicted or spend so much time and, 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 and making social media our main uh, information source uh, for understanding the world. And that may just dump you into really a shaft of, of anxiety. Even for people like me, mm -hmm. I think, we, uh, it's it's hard for me to fight against it, um, but so on one hand, you face in reality in your life like you have super long work time, and 
you don't get much time to spend with your friends or family, probably far away in your home village or in another city uh, working, migrant, migrating, working. And also the, on social media, you, you, also, you always see this, someone just made a billion or a, uh, uh, make a tour, just a, what do you call that? Uh, like some, your peer or even people who are younger than you that suddenly just became famous or became rich. Uh, all this information flowing at you, it's really gonna make you uh, anxious. And a lot of people are thinking, well, if I'm not, if like, I don't even have a life, I work all the time, I'm shouldering so much pressure in the big cities, why not retreat to a smaller town, maybe closer to my home village, Mm-hmm. or just go back to my hometown where I don't have to pay an insane rent. Mm-hmm. Um, I can just have a normal life. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I had my goal. I had my wrong in Beijing or Shanghai or Shenzhen. <laughs> and I know what the modern life is like. So when you, when you become certain age and you're thinking about getting married or having kids, it just, <clears throat> it almost seems impossible to, to make it happen in, in the mega cities. Yeah. For, for an average young people. Then it, it starting to create a trend for them to retreat from uh, retreat to smaller cities. And, and so I think somehow that uh, for me, I think, I think that's a good thing. I mean, you cannot concentrate all your resources, um, human resources or economic resources in just a few mega cities. You really need to develop in a more balanced way. So I think in a, in a broad, broad scheme, it may not be a bad thing. Mm-hmm. And what is happiness <laughs> in the end that you're, you're, you're chasing, right? Mm-hmm. It's not that you woke up in the morning and you scroll through your social media and being anxious about some other young kids or young people who suddenly made a billion just out of doing very simple things. Right. So I think we are out of time, but could you tell us perhaps the name of the film that you're about to release or that you're working on now? Uh, yes, um, I, don't, I don't have a final name yet. It's a working title. Uh, it's pretty straightforward uh, called Bl- Blind Mountaineer. So the film is about this, uh, this um, a, a blind mountaineer who lives in La uh, He He... Um, he lost his eyesight when he was 21 years old. And he, he himself is also a migrant. So he traveled to many cities, tried to find work, uh, got married and had a kid. But six years ago, he started, he came to Lhasa working in this hospital as a masseuse. But he started to uh, learn from uh, an expert here, uh, mountain climbing. So very soon, he climbed uh, mountains from, uh, uh, well, he escalated. And this year, actually two months from now, he's going to challenge the Everest. And we are going to follow him uh, for this uh, journey of a blind mountaineer uh, challenging the Everest. Uh, if he succeed, he will be, uh, I think, the second person in the world to do that. Wow. Well, I'm, I hope we can screen your next film uh, in Ann Arbor, um, not on Zoom, but in person and a big theater. So thank you so much. And thank you for doing this all the way from Tibet. It's just amazing. It somehow makes Zoom seem like a good thing that we can do this. It's just so incredible. Thank yeah, you so much. all the time and space together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for showing the film at such a prompt time uh, on the Chinese New Year's Eve. I know the COVID time really um, is bad and it's not in the past yet, it's still ongoing, but uh, I, I think as long as we are all connected and we're um, sharing ideas and information, positive informations, uh, make, keep making great films, then we will see the day that we toast this virus in the past. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think um, so. If I if I want to add a few more <laughs> words, uh, I would like to thank thank uh, uh, director 
uh, Felicine and uh, Professor Merrick Gallagher again for spending this uh, uh, wonderful night uh, with all of us and to share your insights, um, which really helped us to con contextualize this film. Um, it really shows that even after 11 years, um, this film, Last Train Home, is still very important and uh, meaningful to all of us. Um, and also, uh, many thanks to Fang Zhang uh, uh, for uh, 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 helping us to invite um, a director fan. Um, so I think uh, it's a really um, like a team effort. Um, so, and uh, thank you all to our audience uh, tonight. Uh, Carol, uh, do you want to uh, say a few words to end? Oh, of course. Just again, a great thank you to Professor Gallagher and Director Fon. What, what an incredible uh, pleasure to, to have this conversation and uh, this prelude to the new year. What a great way to start it off. And uh, thank you, the audience as well. Totally awesome. We look forward to uh, films in the future and, and more from Chalk. So stay tuned and all the best everyone for, for the new year. A good yeah. auspicious new year. Happy new year. To everyone. Happy new year. 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 And Joshi Dele. That's oh, yeah. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> of course. Thank you so much. And uh, thank, thank you everyone again and have a great night. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Bye bye.